as they follow the reflections of my brother, Bishop Stephen Hero. Our two dioceses, his is Prince Albert and mine is Saskatoon, border each other here in Saskatchewan, and it may be interesting for you to see how our reflections border and reference each other as well. Our first reading, Exodus 20, cites the event when Moses came down from Mount Sinai to present to the Israelites the Ten Commandments. This Decalogue comprises the core ten rules or guidelines given by God to Moses, his great prophet and lawgiver. The subsequent prophets will hold Israel accountable for these commandments, which are a central feature of God's covenant following Israel's flight from slavery in Egypt. The context of Exodus is the dream of fleeing the oppressors in Egypt is now being realized by the Israelites. However, they are now encountering the desert journey and in this hot and empty place, the quest of realizing freedom towards an unknown future becomes, well, quite new and at times too much for many to seemingly bear. Surprisingly, many soon wish they could go back to the familiar place of slavery in Egypt, where they knew what to expect, their familiar oppressors, their old lifestyle, their basic needs seemingly met. It is in this context that the Israelites will sin, turning away from the one true God who had done great things to deliver Israel from slavery, they will instead turn to false and temporary gods. As Pope Benedict XVI has stated in his encyclical Spe Salve, the hope that we celebrate for humanity is performative hope. That is, the gospel of Jesus Christ doesn't just communicate instruction and information, it makes things happen. It is life-changing. Catholicism is not a sin-centered faith, but a life-centered faith. Our faith addresses the subject of sin. To address the true and real obstacles for humanity and get beyond these with God's help. This is the inspiration and message of Christ on the cross. Thus, St. Paul states in the second reading today, the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. Perhaps this zeal and conviction is what is so evident in Christ's action in his father's house, the temple. In the gospel passage of St. John, the cleansing of the temple occurs at the beginning of the public ministry of Jesus and reveals his zeal for the temple of the Lord, the place of worship and encounter with God. The very dramatic and seemingly out of character response by Jesus to money changers doing commerce at the entrance of the temple. Yet maybe not. God's house is not a marketplace, a place of just buying and selling, a place where particularly the poor and vulnerable may be taken advantage of. The marketplace falls grossly short of the purpose of the temple. Not only falls short, but misrepresents, misdirects, taken to extremes, leads astray. Again, we come back to the long-standing problem of settling for what falls so short of the abundance and new life Jesus personifies and leads us to, away from the false gods to the true God. The temple is God's house, a place of refuge and safety, the place where God's people come to reflect on and encounter God, where they may be touched by God's holy word, where God's people ask for mercy and give thanks for God's blessings. The place where God's people come to hear God's will so that they may live their lives fully. God's house 
is a place of sacred intimacy with God himself. And furthermore, we are to be God's house, his temple. Wow. We come to that blessed place and one who invites us to be like him in more ways than we might imagine. Brothers and sisters in Christ, may our Lenten journey feature daring to trust in God's covenant with us, his desire to live and dwell with and in us. Let him walk with us, especially through the trying deserts, the desolate places and wildernesses, or the places of great challenge and difficulty, including those that cause anxiety and threat. Jesus leads us to an unknown future of freedom and intimacy with him and in him, the only one who sustains us absolutely. May God bless our continued Lenten journey.